My name is Alex. I'm in my early 30s, tall and fit, with short brown hair and a neatly trimmed beard. My life was pretty routine, and I liked it that way. I work as a project manager in a tech company long hours, but the job pays well and keeps me focused. My days usually started early, sipping coffee in the kitchen while scrolling through emails before heading off to the office. I enjoyed my job. It gave me a sense of control and order. My wife, Anna, was the opposite in many ways. She's petite, with long dark hair that frames her face perfectly. She has this calm, almost serene presence about her, and I always found that balance comforting. Anna worked as an accountant at a mid-sized firm, which suited her organized and detail-oriented nature. She was a homebody, unlike me in my younger years, and loved spending her weekends curled up with a book or trying out new recipes. We lived in a cozy apartment where she would always keep things tidy, adding little personal touches to make it feel warm and inviting. Our routine was simple and comfortable. We both worked hard during the week, and our evenings were spent together, often cooking or watching TV. On weekends we'd occasionally go out for dinner or see friends, but for the most part we enjoyed the peace of home. Life felt stable, predictable even. Looking back now, everything seemed so perfect, so secure. I had no idea what was coming. I never would have imagined how quickly everything could change, how fragile our life really was. But that realization only hit me later. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Back in the day, when I was younger, I lived for the nightlife. Clubs, parties, random gatherings, those were my weekends. I loved the thrill of it all. The loud music. The energy of the crowd the feeling of being lost in the moment. Every weekend I'd find myself in a different place, a different scene, chasing that rush of excitement. It was like an addiction. I didn't care much about the future, or where any of it was leading. I just wanted to keep that high going for as long as I could. I had a girlfriend at the time, and honestly, I didn't treat her well. While she stayed home or tried to build something serious between us, I was out with friends, hopping from one place to another. She didn't deserve that but I was too caught up in my own world to see it. The more I partied, the more I distanced myself from her and from any real sense of responsibility. I thought I was just living my life having fun, but deep down, I knew it was wrong. Looking back, I'm not proud of any of it. Those nights blurred together, filled with people I barely remember in moments that meant nothing in the long run. At the time, I convinced myself that I was just being young, enjoying life. But in reality, I was selfish. I ignored the needs of the person who cared about me because I didn't want to face the fact that I was throwing something important away. Even now, thinking about those days leaves a bitter taste in my mouth. I can't change the past, but I've come to terms with the fact that I made a lot of mistakes back then. I wasn't proud of who I was, and I still carry that regret with me. There was one night that changed everything. Up until then, I thought I had everything under control. I was still going out, still chasing that thrill and my girlfriend Blesser was putting up with it. But one night, in a haze of alcohol and bad decisions, I crossed a line I couldn't take back. I cheated on her. It wasn't planned. It wasn't even something I thought about at the time. It just happened. Like so many other things during those nights. But this time, it had consequences. When she found out, I saw the look on her face, and I knew there was no going back. She didn't scream or cry, she just packed her things and left. I tried to explain, to apologize, but it was useless. She was done with me, and I couldn't blame her. I had destroyed everything we had built. And for what? A meaningless night I couldn't even fully remember. The weight of what I'd done hit me like a freight train. I watched her walk away. And in that moment, I realized how deeply I had screwed up. After she left, I was lost. I remember wandering the streets that night, trying to figure out what to do with myself. I had no one to turn to, no place I felt I belonged. It felt like the world had collapsed around me, and all that was left was me and my regrets. I kept thinking about how everything had spiraled out of control. How I'd ruined my life because of one stupid decision. It was a harsh reality to face, but I had no choice. I had to face it alone. For days, I couldn't shake the feeling of emptiness. I couldn't go back to my old life. But I didn't know how to move forward either. I'd lost someone who genuinely cared about me, all because of my selfishness. It was a wake-up call. The kind that slams into you and forces you to see yourself for who you really are. I couldn't deny it anymore I had become exactly the kind of person I swore I'd never be. That experience marked me deeply. 
It wasn't just about losing her, it was about losing myself, realizing that the person I had been was someone I didn't want to be anymore. I made a vow to myself that night, one I've held onto ever since. I promised that I would never let myself fall into that trap again. Never again would I betray someone's trust like that. The pain of knowing I had hurt someone I cared about was something I couldn't bear to live through twice. From that moment on I changed. It wasn't easy but I learned to value what's important, to put other people's feelings before my own selfish desires. That night taught me a lesson I would carry with me for the rest of my life. I became someone who understood the weight of loyalty, someone who knew that love was more than just a feeling it was a responsibility. And I swore I would never break that trust again. After that dark period in my life, I spent a long time trying to rebuild myself. It wasn't easy. I had to confront who I was, what I'd done, and work to become a better person. I focused on my career, cut ties with old habits, and distanced myself from the party scene that had once defined me. It took time, but eventually, I found a sense of stability. I wasn't chasing excitement anymore, I was looking for something real, something lasting. That's when I met Anna. We met in the most unexpected way. It wasn't at a bar or a club but at a quiet little coffee shop I had started frequenting on my way to work. She was sitting at a corner table, reading a book, completely absorbed in it. I remember being struck by how peaceful she looked, so different from the chaotic, fast-paced world I used to know. I don't know what came over me, but I found myself walking over to her table. I asked her what she was reading, and she looked up with the kindest eyes and a soft smile. From that moment, something clicked. We started talking, and I found out she worked as an accountant at a local firm, just a few blocks away from my office. She was quiet, thoughtful, and had this calming presence about her that immediately drew me in. We exchanged numbers, and our conversations soon turned into coffee dates, and those coffee dates into dinner. Before I knew it, we were spending nearly every free moment together. Unlike my past relationships, this one wasn't built on excitement or intensity, it was built on something much deeper. Anna was everything I wasn't and in many ways, she balanced me out. She wasn't interested in the nightlife or parties, she preferred quiet evenings at home, cooking or reading. Her world was calm and steady, and that was exactly what I needed. Being with her felt like coming home after being lost for so long. It wasn't a whirlwind romance, but something stronger, something that felt real and lasting. I remember the moment I realized I had fallen in love with her. We were sitting on the couch, watching a movie and I looked over at her. She wasn't doing anything special, just sitting there, completely engrossed in the film. But there was something in that moment, her presence, her warmth that made me realize I didn't want anything else. She wasn't just someone I loved being around, she was the person I wanted to build my life with. Meeting Anna felt like a second chance, a fresh start after all the mistakes I had made. I knew, deep down, that I would never take her for granted. After everything I had been through, I understood the value of trust and loyalty in a way I never had before. I promised myself that I would be the man she deserved, and that I would never repeat the mistakes of my past. Anna was the complete opposite of me in so many ways, but even though she didn't have a desire to go out to clubs or bars herself, she was always curious about the stories from my past. It became a bit of a routine between us. On quiet evenings, when we were sitting together after dinner, she'd ask me to tell her about my wild nights from before. I don't want to live through it, she'd say with a smile, but hearing about it is kind of fascinating. She liked to hear how different my life had been, almost as if she couldn't imagine me in those kinds of places anymore. I'd tell her about some of the places I used to go. Some were glamorous, high-end clubs with expensive drinks and well-dressed people. Those places felt like a different world, a world where everyone was pretending to be something they weren't. I'd describe the fancy lounges with velvet ropes, VIP sections, and people who cared more about being seen than having fun. She'd listen intently, her eyes wide, as if she couldn't quite believe that I had been a part of that scene. Then, of course, there were the not-so-glamorous spots. I'd laugh as I told her about the dingy bars and seedy clubs where anything went. These places were a far cry from the luxury of the high-end spots. The floors were sticky, the music was too loud, and the crowd was unpredictable. I used to love those places for their raw, unfiltered energy. But as I told her these stories, I realized just how far I had come from that lifestyle. It felt like talking about a different person, someone I barely recognized anymore. Anna would shake her head and laugh when I described some of the more chaotic nights. I don't know how you did it, she'd say. It all sounds exhausting, I'd smile and agree, 
Knowing that my life with her was so much better than those fleeting thrills, it felt good to talk about it. Almost like putting that part of my life to rest, but at the same time I could tell she found the stories entertaining in a way. She didn't want to live it, but hearing about the wild, unpredictable nights I'd experienced gave her a glimpse into a world she never had and never wanted. Despite our differences, those conversations became a way for us to understand each other better. She saw the person I had been, and the person I had become, and I got to appreciate just how peaceful and stable life could be with someone like her. It was as if she found comfort in knowing that I had already lived through that phase and left it behind. We both felt secure in the knowledge that our lives together were far removed from those chaotic nights. Little did I know at the time, those conversations would later take on a much darker significance. Not too long ago, Anna made a big decision, she decided to quit her job and move to another company. It wasn't an easy choice for her, since she was comfortable where she was, but the offer was too good to pass up. The new company offered better pay, more flexibility, and the potential for growth. We discussed it at length, and I fully supported her. It felt like the right move for her career, and I knew she deserved the recognition. But with the new job came new co-workers, and, as it turned out, new friendships. It wasn't long after she started her new position that she mentioned meeting someone at work a woman named Kate they hit it off right away. According to Anna she's a little more outgoing than me Anna would say with a laugh, but she's fun. And it's nice having someone to talk to during lunch I didn't think much of it at first. Anna's circle of friends had always been small, so I figured it was good for her to expand it a bit. Kate seemed like just another co-worker at the time, someone she'd talk to about work, and maybe grab a coffee with once in a while. A few weeks passed, and Anna mentioned that Kate would be coming over to our place for dinner. I remember thinking it would be nice to meet her, to see who had become such a big part of Anna's work life. When the evening came, I was ready to play the good host. I wasn't expecting anything unusual. It was just a casual dinner with one of Anna's new friends. But when Kate arrived, something about her immediately struck me. Kate was lively, confident, and had an energy that filled the room. She was tall, with short blonde hair and dressed in a way that made her stand out, even in our small living room. Her personality was bold, the kind of person who talks with their hands and dominates a conversation without even trying. I could see why Anna found her interesting she was the type of person who could bring excitement into any situation. But as we talked, I couldn't shake a strange feeling. It wasn't that Kate was rude or inappropriate, she was perfectly pleasant. But the more she spoke, the more I realized how much she, remi she reminded me of. Well, me in my younger years. She talked about parties, nightlife, and all these clubs she loved going to. She knew the scene well, almost too well, and I could tell she was still very much a part of that world I had left behind. The more she talked, the more uncomfortable I became. It felt like I was looking at a reflection of my past, and that made me uneasy. As the night went on, I watched how easily she and Anna laughed together, sharing inside jokes and stories from work. It wasn't that I was jealous of their friendship, but I couldn't help but feel a growing sense of unease. Kate was everything Anna wasn't outgoing, impulsive, always looking for the next adventure. And while Anna seemed grounded and calm, I started to wonder if spending time with someone like Kate might change that. Still, I kept my thoughts to myself, not wanting to stir up unnecessary drama. By the end of the evening I shook Kate's hand and thanked her for coming over. But as she left, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had shifted. There was something about her presence, her influence, that left me with a sense of dread. I brushed it off as overthinking after all. It was just one dinner. But deep down, a part of me couldn't help but worry about what was to come. One evening, Anna mentioned she was going to a corporate event with her new colleagues. It was supposed to be a standard work-related gathering nothing out of the ordinary. I told her to have a good time, and that I'd see her later. I was busy with some work of my own, so I didn't think much of it. But as the night went on, I noticed that Anna wasn't answering her phone. I tried calling several times, leaving voicemails, but there was no response. I started to worry. It wasn't like Anna to just disappear without any notice. I tried to brush it off, thinking she might be busy or caught up in conversations. But as the hours passed and the silence continued, my concern grew. I decided to reach out to Kate, hoping she might have some insight into where Anna was or what was going on. I called her and explained the situation, asking if she knew where Anna might be. 
Kate seemed a bit hesitant at first, but eventually mentioned that Anna had gone to a club with a few of her colleagues after the event. She didn't know the name of the place but said it was one of those high spots that had a reputation for being lively. That information did little to ease my worries. I decided to call one of Anna's colleagues directly, hoping for more clarity. When I reached Anna's colleague, I asked if he knew where they had gone. He seemed surprised by the question and told me the name of the club. As he mentioned the name, a sinking feeling settled in my stomach. It was a name I recognized a place I had avoided like the plague after all the mess in my past. It was one of those clubs that had a reputation for being a haven for all sorts of debauchery. A place I had hoped to leave behind forever. I felt a wave of panic and frustration. It wasn't just the fact that Anna was there. It was the realization of what kind of place it was. I could already picture the scene loud music. A crowd that wasn't there for anything meaningful. Just the kind of environment I had left behind. My mind raced with a mix of anger and concern. What was Anna doing there? And why hadn't she let me know? Without wasting another moment, I grabbed my coat and headed out the door. I had to go to that club and find out for myself what was happening. As I drove there, my thoughts were a whirlwind. I knew I had to see it with my own eyes to understand what was going on, but I couldn't shake the growing sense of dread that something was about to go terribly wrong. As I drove toward the club, my mind was a storm of anxiety and frustration. The more I thought about the place, the more my dread grew. I remembered it all too well the club's notorious reputation for hosting some of the most debauched and exclusive parties. It wasn't just a nightclub, it had become something far worse over the years. It was known as a den of excess, a place where boundaries were pushed and moral lines were blurred. The realization that Anna was there made my stomach churn. I remembered my own experiences there, years ago, during a time when I was lost in a whirlwind of parties and reckless behavior. Back then, I had frequented this club more often than I care to admit. It was a place where the lights were dim, the music was deafening, and the atmosphere was charged with a sense of forbidden thrill. I had once felt invincible, reveling in the chaos and freedom, believing I could handle it all, but it wasn't long before things went horribly wrong. There was one particular night that stood out vividly in my memory. I was with a group of friends, and the evening had started out like any other. We were drinking, laughing, and dancing, but as the night wore on, the environment grew darker and more twisted. The club's true nature revealed itself as the crowd became more unruly and the music more intense. The energy shifted from fun to something more dangerous, and in that moment of misguided bravado, I ended up betraying my then-girlfriend's trust. I remember stumbling into a situation I deeply regretted. One moment I was caught up in the thrill of the night, and the next, I was in a compromising position with someone who wasn't my girlfriend. It wasn't premeditated, but that didn't make it any less wrong. The guilt of that night has haunted me ever since. I lost someone who truly cared about me, all because I couldn't control my impulses and stayed in a place that represented everything a place and a one was trying to escape. As I approached the club, those memories came crashing back with a painful clarity. I knew exactly what kind of place it was a breeding ground for the kind of hedonism and betrayal I had sworn to leave behind. The thought of Anna being there, surrounded by the very chaos that had once consumed me, filled me with a deep sense of foreboding. I couldn't bear the thought of her being pulled into that world, and I knew I had to act fast to protect her from making the same mistakes I had. I parked the car and took a deep breath before walking toward the entrance. The bouncer at the door glanced at me with a disinterested expression, but I pushed past him, driven by a mix of desperation and resolve. I needed to find Anna and get her out of there before the night turned into something even worse. The echoes of my past failures rang in my ears as I made my way inside, ready to confront whatever lay ahead. As I stepped into the club, the noise and lights hit me with full force. The atmosphere was chaotic and unsettling, and it didn't take long to realize that the place was just as I remembered dark, crowded, and morally ambiguous. I knew exactly where things would be happening. This wasn't the type of place where you needed to guess. The club had a notorious reputation for its hidden, more disturbing activities. My heart raced as I made my way through the throng of people, heading straight for the back where the restrooms were. Navigating through the crowd was a challenge, but I pushed through, driven by a sense of urgency. The club's loud music and flashing lights seemed to blur together as I finally reached the restroom area. I took a deep breath before pushing open the door. Inside, the restroom was as grimy as I remembered, with a harsh fluorescent light that did nothing to mask the filth, but my focus was elsewhere. I scanned the room quickly, 
and my worst fears were confirmed. There standing by the sinks were Anna, Kate, and a man who I didn't recognize. Anna was leaning against the wall, looking distressed. Kate was talking animatedly while the man had a hand on Anna's arm. The sight was like a punch to the gut. My heart sank as I took in the scene. This was exactly the kind of situation I had hoped to avoid. It was a stark reminder of how easily someone could be drawn into the underbelly of this place. Without a moment's hesitation, I walked up to Anna and grabbed her by the arm. We're leaving, I said firmly, trying to keep my voice steady. Anna looked up in surprise, clearly startled by my sudden sud. The man, seeing me approach, immediately stepped forward with a defensive posture. Hey, what's the problem, he demanded his tone aggressive. He clearly wasn't happy about me interrupting whatever was happening. I didn't have time for any arguments. I pushed the man aside, not too gently. Get your hands off her, I snapped, my voice cutting through the noise of the club. The shove was enough to make him stagger back, but he didn't seem to back down entirely. He glared at me, clearly angry, but I didn't care. My priority was to get Anna out of this place as quickly as possible. Anna looked both confused and relieved as I guided her toward the door. What's going on, she asked, her voice trembling slightly. I didn't answer right away. I was too focused on getting us out of there. As we made our way through the restroom, Kate followed, a concerned look on her face. She started to say something, but I waved her off. You can stay here if you want, I said tersely. I'm taking Anna home. The drive home was fraught with a heavy silence, each of us lost in our own thoughts. Anna was visibly shaken and I could feel the tension between us like a physical barrier. I focused on the road, but my mind was a whirlwind of confusion and betrayal, trying to process everything that had just happened. When we finally arrived home, Anna broke the silence. Her voice was quiet, but there was an undeniable determination in her tone. I need to tell you something, she said, her eyes fixed on the floor. I'm sorry, but I did something wrong tonight. I didn't expect it to happen. But I ended up being unfaithful to you. Her confession was blunt and matter-of-fact, lacking the emotional weight I had anticipated. Anna's admission was a gut punch, she continued, her voice steady but her eyes avoiding mine. I went to that club because I wanted to feel something different, something exciting. I was tired of the routine, and I guess I got caught up in it. Kate kept saying how you used to be the life of the party. And somehow that made me think it was okay to let loose. Even if it meant crossing a line her words were painful to hear, each sentence a reminder of the trust that had been shattered. The revelation left me reeling. The betrayal wasn't just about the act itself but about the motivations behind it. Anna had been influenced by Kate's reckless attitude and had made a choice that broke the promises we had made to each other. The irony that Kate, a mirror image of my past, had played a part in leading Anna astray was almost too much to bear. As Anna continued to pack her things, her face was a mix of resolve and sorrow. She didn't ask for forgiveness or try to justify her actions further. The finality of her words hung in the air, leaving no room for doubt about the gravity of what had happened. I knew then that we needed to take a step back. Anna, I said quietly, trying to keep my voice steady, I think it's best if you go stay with your mom for a while. We both need some space to process everything I felt a deep sadness as I spoke knowing that this was the only course of action left. Anna nodded, her expression resigned but still defiant. She finished gathering her things and, with one last look, left for her mother's place. I watched her go, feeling a profound sense of loss and disillusionment. As I sat alone in the now empty house, I couldn't help but reflect on the cruel twist of fate that had brought me to this point. My past mistakes, which I had vowed never to repeat, seemed to have set the stage for this final act of betrayal. I was left with a somber realization. The pain of being deceived by someone I loved was a harsh reminder of the promises I had made to myself. And as I faced this new reality, I vowed that I would honor those promises, no matter how difficult it might be.